Being a perfectionist is a mixed blessing. On the one hand, I am proud that I have a high set of personal standards, a strong work ethic, and a clear sense of right and wrong. But on the other hand, when my perfectionism gets out of control, it can lead to frustration and anger and can cut at my sense of self-worth. I'll give you a quick glimpse at how the perfectionist views the world. When most people see this image, they see grandma's old-fashioned cross-stitch sampler. There's the picket fence, there's the alphabet, there's the family name. But when I look at this, all I can fixate on is that freaking apostrophe that shouldn't be there. <laughs> the perfectionist is not impressed. In pop culture, the perfectionist is often portrayed as fastidious, like Felix from The Odd Couple, anal retentive, like Niles from Frasier, sometimes bossy, like Monica from Friends, or even power hungry, like Tracy Flick from Election. We kind of stand out in a crowd, so it makes us easy targets. Um, in the world of celebrities, uh, the perfectionist is often celebrated, like domestic goddess Martha Stewart or infamous control freak Barbara Streisand. But um, we also love to make fun of perfectionists whose egos are just out of control, like reality show chef Gordon Ramsay and self-proclaimed king of the world, James Cameron. You could say these are my spirit animals. Um, as a Gen X American, obviously I grew up surrounded by constant messages that perfectionism is attainable. Um, movies like this and magazines perpetuate this unattainable beauty standard of the perfect 10. Even our U.S. Constitution perpetuates perfectionism with its promise of a more perfect union. When I was a kid, I remember hearing about why they call it your Achilles heel. So my dad told me how his mom dipped him in the river Styx, but she missed a spot. And that's where he was shot by an arrow during the Trojan War, and he died. Now, no fault of my father's, but this was my takeaway. Get it right, kid, or you could die. Now, I'm not sure if any of these external influences actually did in, uh, contribute to my perfectionism or if I was born this way. I'm not sure if it was a coping mechanism I developed after my parents divorced when I was four. But I do know that I was identified as a perfectionist in my report card in the second grade by my favorite teacher. Um, but I um, became accustomed to getting all A's and I felt a really strong sense of satisfaction about getting it right and about getting recognized for getting it right. But that also meant that I carried an equal, if not stronger, sense of shame and disappointment whenever I took home anything less, even a B. But I found a healthy outlet for my perfectionism as an editor. If you're good at finding errors, you may as well get paid to point them out, right? <laughs> so I joined my high school newspaper staff uh, as a sophomore, stayed in journalism for 22 years, putting my eagle eyes to good use. I even got to yell, stop the presses, if I found an error on deadline. But um, my... Uh, perfectionism didn't just manifest itself in academic excellence. It, it perpetuated into every facet of my life. If I folded a piece of paper in half, it had to be folded exactly in half. If I followed a, a recipe, it had to be, you know, every measurement exactly. If I made my bed, it, the sheets were tucked so tight that I could barely get in. Um, if I became a fan of somebody, I had to be their number one fan, memorizing every lyric and owning every rarity. You can actually see my hand reaching up towards Madonna here. This is um, when she made her festival debut at Coachella. I waited all day in the desert sun to see her perform six songs. That's devotion. Um, but it's one thing to be obsessed about being the perfect fan or the perfect editor because those are external obsessions. But when that critical eye turns inward, it's a whole different story. And um, that set of uh, personal standards that's in my head, I've come to now know, is called the inner critic. Um, you could say that my inner critic is locked in constant battle with my inner child. My inner child is confident, focused, creative, truly the person I want to be. But along comes the inner critic, always ready to point out the shortcomings. Well, you should have thought of that first. Well, you should try harder next time, and so on. So when I waste energy uh, beating myself up, it can lead to this sense of paralysis, like if I can't get it exactly right, why even bother doing it all? If I can't guarantee that I'm going to get an A, I'm not even going to bother enrolling in the class. So it's easy for me to procrastinate. This can lead to frustration, which can eventually turn into full-blown wrath. You know, each of the Enneagram types can be associated with one of the seven deadly sins, and each of the seven deadly sins can be associated with a Gilligan's Island character. This makes me the skipper. And by the way, the professor died this morning. Rest in peace, Russell Johnson. But that, that was totally not planned. Um, anyway, um, 
And when this perfectionist lets his wrath take over, I turn to black and white thinking. Everything is either right or wrong. Everything is either good or bad. I either feel superior or inferior. And this pattern um, can just leave me incredibly, feeling incredibly frustrated in my personal and professional relationships. It's a toxic, judgmental cycle that only brings about more stagnation, more paralysis, and more procrastination. But when I do get around to mowing that overgrown lawn, I can guarantee a flawless execution. <laughs> so today, I try to channel my perfectionism into more positive outcomes uh, as a political activist for the reproductive rights movement. <laughs> as you can see here at a rally uh, during last year's presidential election, I think Paul Ryan was inside that hotel. Um, but this is me dressed as a giant birth control pill pack. Um, I'm enjoying stepping out of my comfort zone and trying to make the world a better place. Michelangelo once said, a good artist ought never to allow impatience to overcome his sense of the main end of art, perfection. This coming from somebody who had four years to finish painting the Sistine Chapel. But I keep this quote displayed in my office to remind myself never to let my perfectionism stifle my creativity. <laughs> um, I still do struggle with my perfect being a perfectionist, although I prefer to focus on its more positive name, the idealist. I know I can't fix all the world's problems, and I know that I can't just snap my fingers and silence that inner critic, but I'm doing my best to accept the world for all its imperfections just the way it is. Thank you.